Welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Today we're doing another discussion video. We're actually recording this literally right after the last discussion video. Uh, but this one is going to go up on like Sunday, Saturday. Uh, and I got Joe with me because he never hung up and he's the homie and he's going to he's going to be another feature on, on another video. So, Joe, we'll what's say up? Hey, yeah, what's yeah. going on? So what is it the day that this goes up it's gonna be actually this goes up on christmas eve so that is like what like a week removed from the first regional yeah about literally it's it's about a week and a half i think yeah yeah so also merry christmas eve everyone oh yeah ha this. merry christmas uh if if you celebrate christmas i i hope that you have a great day if you don't celebrate christmas hey guess what have a good one too that's how it works all right yep but you know uh we're gonna talk about just like a couple of like archetypes or like top team there all right every team is a permutation of like these four teams for the most part right like pretty much yeah just like, variations yeah and that's like a thing that i really like about pokemon you can grab these teams and change two or three pokemon and it's a brand new team but it's still gonna work unless you're like putting bad pokemon on them but we're gonna if talk about putting, like if you're putting like a, a flea coco on there and stuff, yeah no you know? yeah like don't expect to like throw um don't expect to throw like like scrungo uh, like a scrungo blumbo like on a team and like expect it to do good no but like if you if you like take like this this dondozo team and you like swap out like meow Scrata for like i don't know uh obama snow yeah sure like you'll get away with it like that sort of thing but um I've seen um those dondozo teams like some of the japanese builds they've arcanine over talon and then they put like scarf gold dingo instead and then yeah they have, yeah like, some other something replacing the hydragon or whatever yeah so. but that's what we're talking about today we're gonna talk about these teams going into the uh the first batch of regionals uh give our thoughts explain why they're good and just talk about like general like matchup stuff so yeah uh I don't know, I guess we can just start off going down the list. Oh, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. Joe's link down in the description as always. Let's do it. Yeah, Joe, sure. you wanna you wanna start talking about screens? I obviously the moves aren't filled out because like we're just gonna talk about these generally. Yeah, so I think I think the big thing with screens, right, is like they've, it's kind of peeled into two directions. At the start of the format, it was a lot more biased towards like more bulky reactive stuff with like Skeleturge. Now it's kind of turned into more teams that have like bulk of Annihilate as a main option. And it's just because like screens just really support Annihilate and its stats are actually really insane. Uh, I don't think I don't think even I respected it enough going into this and you'll see variations of like bulk of Annihilate like all, all the place now. It's just an incredibly strong concept that's just like continued to develop to the point where like now you actually have to figure out whether your opponent's Annihilate is like Vital Spirit with like Terrifier or like Safety Goggles with Terrifier or Lumberry with Water. Like there's so many different applications that you can do with Annihilate and like so many different ways you can build it out that's actually like really useful for it. Yeah. Um, and also like Annihilate's a big reason why like Intimidate isn't really a thing anymore because for a while like Define Annihilate plus like Clear Amulet Pokemon made it really difficult to actually get an Intimidate off. So because of that, like mo like I get we're going into like open team sheet, but if we like talk about like just ladder stuff too, like just really quick, um, a lot of people won't even bring like Intimidate to a, an Annihilate matchup. So Vital Spirit is like super safe if you want to make sure you like never go to sleep like in the face of like an Amoongus. It just makes it so much more reliable. Um, and yeah, and like the 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 Scarf Final Gambit sets, like I never really found them all that great, but like the fact that you have to respect them is why like bulk up Annihilate is so threatening because like on that first turn, if they don't respect like the the Final Gambit, like the bulk up is just like like a really really annoying option to like, have to deal with. Yeah, and I think too, like I mean, the main pros of screens and why they're doing so good right now. I mean, you have like uh you kind of extend the game right like you're extending the game over a course of time you're able to kind of control the options of your opponent you're able to prevent them from doing as much damage as you know like they necessarily want to do and on top of that too it like gives you the ability to like set up pokemon like like annihilate you know but there are other options like azumarill sometimes on these teams you have other pokemon and sometimes azumarill doesn't even run like setup moves but yeah. it can you know um you can even like, and throw, you like, have a lot song of... on these guys even if like you're like not trapping like Paris songs like not even that bad of an option considering like how the format kind of plays you just get rid of two pokemon on lead and like perish win there was like a speaking of azumarill i guess there was an azumarill perish trap team that was used in like one of the most recent like big japanese tournaments and it was like sap sipper like terra ground with like sing and perish song <laughs> no no that should be illegal i'm not talking about that one let's not talk about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but I, I think like too the nice thing about azumarill on these kind of teams is like it gives you like that fairy coverage that you don't normally have with too many pokemon and like obviously there's so many variations of these teams you'll usually see like 
you know, Annihilate being one of the trends or like something like another ghost type like Skeledurge, which can just ignore Dondoza boost. Like they're all kind of fundamentally built the same way. And I think like they're just built around like having a lot of flexibility, right? So these are definitely yeah. teams that you can expect to see, especially used by players who are like more of the like, I like to play reactively compared to my opponent or I like to utilize my teams in a way where like I am dealing with like what my opponent's doing. It's a more safe option, basically. Yeah, this is, this the is, this is pretty much how I like to play. I like, I, I don't know, I like screens builds uh mainly just because it always feels like you're in control of the game to some extent uh it always feels like you have options too like these are like the most flexible role with the punches sort of teams you can run in the format if you're running hyper offense and something goes wrong like you might actually just like lose turn like two or three but like with like these sort of screens teams it gives you so much room for error that like even if you're like playing at like a less than like perfect level like you can win games like it doesn't you really can make actually... mistakes yeah like i like being able to make mistakes because i am not perfect um i and... think the only thing that like hurts tailwind team sometimes is that like i mean and this is with any team that extends the game like you're more weak to rng right like you, you leave yourself open oh, yeah. to like getting kind of hacked out by like thunder wave or like you know crits stuff like that mm -hmm. um and that's like the main draw of that that's actually why like even throughout the course of this format, I've tried out other archetypes because my only thing I really didn't like about screens was just how often I would just lose to getting flinched or something like. Yeah. And also, too, when you're using these kind of teams, like if you're losing because you got rock slide flinched like three times in a row, but like you built the team where you knew you were going to get rock slide, like rock slide hit like before you were going to get to do anything like you kind of knew that it was a possibility. Yeah, you know? so. I like that philosophy of like. Okay, I might have gotten the worst luck possible, but there is there is a world where I played better and didn't even end up in that position where it was possible to do that. I like that kind of philosophy of playing this game. Uh, the oh, one absolutely. thing with like these teams too is like I think these teams are a justification as to why Meowskarada seen such high usage because like Life Orb, Bandit, or Sash Meowskarada can just run house on these teams. Azumarill down, Annihilate like doesn't go down to one, but it's if it gets like any kind of chip, like it doesn't care about like screens, it doesn't care about bulk up boosts. Uh, you outspeed it naturally, so if they don't have a Tailwind up, like a Meowskarada can take down an Annihilate really reliably. It has U-turn for like Hydreigon. Obviously, these things are like Terra Steel or Terra Fire, but like in a lot of situations, like if your opponent has Meowskarada, like that's like public enemy number one for your team. Like it is just going to ruin your day with these guys, which is another reason I like. I feel like these guys, as as like reliable as they are, like you have to have that contingency plan specifically for the Mon that crits every hit. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I think that like overall too, like I like my take because i guess we're gonna give like our takes at the end right of like how we expect each kind of team to do i'd mm -hmm. probably say screens will do well i don't think it's gonna win though i think it'll do really well but i don't think it'll go beyond top four no like i'm gonna spoil it right now i think hyper offense is gonna win <laughs> like I, oh, I, I don't know I, mm. I think hyper offense is gonna win like it's 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 really easy to pilot through like the early swiss rounds and then at like the high level like it at like the top tables right it, it, it like then like it's it's like a skill check i don't know i feel like it, it's really easy for like cleaning up rounds one two and three if you get if you catch my drift i mean definitely it's it's uh i mean i call it a noob stomper you know what I mean? yeah like, that's what i mean i didn't, I didn't want to like, say that <laughs> no it's okay like it's it's what it is you know what i mean like in any game you know if you play a certain strategy like some strategies are aimed around like exploiting like weaker opponents in the early yeah. rounds you know Mm -hmm. um and that gives you enough momentum to carry forward where even if you play well enough like you can continue to do well you know yeah so that's well, kind of like the objective of like i think the kind of like more offensive teams yeah and especially with like the way that pokemon tournaments are structured nude stomping strats are like really nice for carrying you through the early rounds because like the thing is if you like if you like go uh x and two like rounds one and two there's a very low chance you're gonna make it in the top cut like if you can like save the, i think there's like yeah very low yeah, very, if you can low. if you can like noob stomp your way to like round seven before you take your first l you're good like you're probably good you're probably doing pretty good at that point mm. since you get matched up with people with similar ranks but i'm trying to think so there's 600 players at san diego san diego let's assume that like only like 580 show up right yeah it's uh, never perfect. i think yeah, and I think realistically that's still 11 rounds. I think actually if you go X and 2, you still cut guaranteed. I think X and 3 is resistance. Yeah. Okay, that's that's kind of that's kind of hot. I wish I said that. That's crazy, right? Isn't yeah. that kind of nuts though? Like Yeah, like I would have gone, but like my my like uh my girlfriend's visiting like so soon that like I would have to like leave the day after that she left. It's not worth it for me. Um, yeah. But yeah. I mean, we can move on to like hard trick room now. I feel like we it's it's kind of easy to talk about screens offense it's like it's it's a thing that it's it, it's existed for a while everyone like we, knows it everyone loves it yeah. it's everywhere yeah <laughs> hard hard tr like next to dozo 
I would say is like the most experimental uh, thing going on right now because there isn't really like a hard TR team yet. Um, but you mostly just see like Indeedee armor you slapped onto other builds. But as far as hard trick room teams, it feels like Hariyama is almost mandatory um, because it's such a threatening mon with like guts, uh, flame orb stuff. You can like, it, I don't know. I know for like non Indeedee setups, um, like for Rigoraf plus like Hariyama is really scary. I've even seen like a Ranger Hariyama be a thing. But like the consistent mon is never going to be like the trick room setter. Like it's it's. Mm -hmm. But like once the trick room's up, Hariyama just like runs house. You know. I think like so it's funny because like a lot of times like people will always underrate hard trick room going into like the first event and then they'll end up winning just because no one really respects it. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised to see like something similar happen in this regional. But also too, I think the main thing that's really important for trick room and what the archetype really has to do before it goes to San Diego is someone has to figure out like how do I make this team not just lose to like someone stalling out my turns like. For Really easily in the early game right because like yes you can lead in dd armorage and armorage while it's an offensive pokemon is solid but like almost every team has a dark type right so mm -hmm. a lot of people are gonna lead their dark types they're gonna lead like snarl they're gonna lead struggle bug or something that can deal with your you know setup now i think the nice thing about specifically in dd armorage and this is something i think is worth talking about is the fact that like you have the wide guard and you have both options to set trick room. I think that's a huge buff for trick room, honestly, mm -hmm. that like also you can set trick room because it doesn't limit your options as much, you know? Oh yeah. Like in the, that's, that's like another big thing. Like you mentioned that like the biggest issue with trick room is people stalling out your trick room turns, right? Uh, because so many people in the face of like hard trick room will commit really, really heavily to making sure that the trick room doesn't go up um, or, you know, just, trying their best to position in such a way that they can stall out the, the oncoming turns. Uh, Indeedee Arm Rouge is like a really scary lead for that because Armor Rouge can actually just straight up go on the offensive and like maybe pick up a KO with like Life Orb Expanding Force. And then like if you pick up a KO turn one or even turn two and, and like set up Trick Room with the Indeedee next to it, it makes it infinitely harder for the opponent to stall at Trick Room turns with just three Pokemon, especially if like one of those Pokemon doesn't even have Protect. And like, I don't know, like in, in, in Armor Rouge almost feels like mandatory for Trick Room at this point with like just that kind of value yeah, on it. it. I think by far the best Trick Room setter, honestly. Um, the other set that I've seen Armor Rouge run as well is Safety Goggles Terra Dark. So you can't get Pranks or Taunted if you lead it next to like Hariyama. And you also um, can't get spored by like a Moongus or anything, right? Yeah. So that's like a really cool option as well. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is too, is and this is something that hasn't been on too many hard trick room teams, King Gambit should really be mandatory on these teams, I think, because a lot of times people will lead like Snarl or Struggle Bug into your two trick room setters. If you just swap one of them out into King Gambit and click trick room, like the opponent's in a really bad position turn one, you know? Yeah, um, and, and like King Gambit's like strong, not only because it's like a defiant Pokemon, I think that Supreme Overlord isn't like actually that good of an ability but it's like fun uh but like as as far as like trick room counterplay goes if your opponent wants to play passive in front of king gambit they're screwed if you just click a sword stance like i've seen sword stance king gambit like win games turn two uh just because like i don't know like you can't stall out in front of it like you you it's almost like a lose lose like okay if i like don't protect my opponent can like kowtow cleave and like one shot me or like if i protect here my sword my opponent swords dances and then like i have no counterplay for like the next two turns i like i lose a pokemon you like forfeit a piece right there yeah i definitely think too that uh a big thing too and we have a bombasto here on the list as well bombasto is definitely something that has potential in trick room because speed tier is actually pretty mid overall like it's not actually that fast and also too like if you're running like even light clan this thing you said aurora veil like it makes your trick room team like super super tanky and it's really tough to remove <laughs> You have like such bulky mons on Trick Room, so it makes them even more difficult to remove. I really just think like the only weakness that this team has, like or just Trick Room in general has, that's going to be like something that has to be fixed going into this regional is the supporters can be exploited really hard if you can attackers in easily, right? So for example, like if your opponent is like clicking make it rain in front of you, knowing that like even though you have an armor and a DD on the field, let's say that the armor can't touch you for some reason, you're a reader or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, it actually makes it really hard to swap in one of the, your back attackers like in well, you know, because you're taking a bunch of damage. And I think that that's the kind of stuff that Trick Room has to think about. I honestly think Trick Room is another one of those like, I mean, we, we like we keep going back to like this noob stomper, like early round winning thing. But like Trick Room is one of those strategies as well. If someone's like running just like, like, let's say it's someone's first regional, they're running a basic tail and offense team. Like they're probably going to get loose to this, you know? Yeah. Um, and where Trick Room really begins to like struggle a bit more is when there's like really strong players, I think in like when it's facing against those people, because those are the ones who are going to know like all the different ways they can counterplay that. And they would have considered that. Now, that being said, 
early meta a lot of people like to discount trick room because they need to be reminded by like it winning the first regional that is good so maybe some people even if they're good players are not going to think about it but i think it's worth considering for them yeah uh no, yeah i mean like in beyond that like there's not much left to talk about about trick room it's 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 you set up trick room and you hit things and obama snows where do you think there. it's gonna place all right uh i think we're definitely gonna have a, a trick room in top four to be honest um but i don't think it's gonna win I think it's either going to win or it's going to be in top 16. Really? Or, or I, no, I think I, I'm honestly convinced it might make finals, but I want to say top four to be safe. Because um, mm -hmm. like as good as like Trick Room is, someone's going to respect it enough to prepare. And it just it's a matter of if that person top cuts, you know? Mm -hmm. But in the end too, like a tournament run is all predicated on like who you play, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so yeah. you could like, yeah, it's just, uh, I think... That's why I'm saying like I think it's either like it wins or it gets top 16 because I could see it like pulling a completely free bracket with like all the Tailwind teams that just didn't bother respecting it. You know what yeah. I mean? Honestly, and I, like just farming I, those and also it could just pull that one screens player who like has like 20 million answers to it, you know? So yeah, it's yeah. To slow it down, you know? Yeah, like they're like, oh, yeah, no, I got I got Terra. I got Terra Water Amoongus with Spore. I got um, I, I, I hacked in like a a liopard so i could reverse trick room like you know it's just the guy who's like perfectly prepared he hates trick room. i imprison fair giraffe will not let you get your trick room oh, off <laughs> yo imprison for a giraffe is so annoying when you're using sylveon because they always run hyper voice all right yeah. um don dozo don doctor uh so oh look i i i am the number one don dozo stan i don't think it's i mean win. it's good it's good, I right? yeah i don't think it's gonna win though I think, okay, so here's, here's basically, there's like two timelines going into this regional, right? It's timeline where Dondozo proves that it's like actually like the best strategy in the game right now and wins the event or people are, because people are fixated on it. Everyone's talking about Dondozo right now, right? Oh, yeah, because so people like, are bad and they don't know how to beat it. Yeah, but naturally you would assume that that would mean everyone's going to focus on having a check for it. So that, I see two possibilities happen from here, right? And one is basically a Dondozo player wins, but the Dondozo player wins because of the rest of the partners and not because of the Dondozo and Tatsugiri. Yeah, it's like a and threat. It's more of a threat than anything. Exactly. And I, and I think that there's also a possibility that all the Dondozo just bomb because everyone's ready for it. Everyone's running checks for it. And what I think is really good about Dondozo teams, and I, I talk about this a lot when I like uh, work with other players and stuff, and I say it's not the fact that you can set up in front of people because good players are going to know how to stop your setup. Yeah. It's the fact that you can threaten it the entire time and force your opponents to bring sub optimal mons into your other four choices and that's oh, what yeah. makes it good in my no a hundred percent like that's all right like i built like maybe 20 dondozo teams at this point um and i like just messing with different like permutations of it but like i i have always said that like the number one reason dondozo is viable is you pressure your opponent to have to bring so like if if you're facing a dondozo on team preview and you don't bring your dondozo check every single game you're like it, it no one's gonna do that no one's not gonna bring their dondozo check because they're just too scared because it dondozo is the type of mon where if the check isn't there you get rolled but if the check is there and they don't bring the dondozo you feel like an idiot you're either rolled or you're trolled you know um yep. but that's also a reason i think that like one of the better ways to play dondozo is with a goth on the team or, or even is like the stupid goth team i made it's called war crime because it's funny um here like, oh my god. Look, the, the paw mod's suboptimal. It's there for funnies, but like Gothitelle, Skeledurge, and like maybe not Golden Go. I just threw Golden Go there because it was funny. But like having like a mon that beats the common Dondozo check plus Gothitelle, if they like lead off like Murkrow and you have like, I don't know, like Rotom, Rotom Wash plus like Goth, fake out Thunderbolt. You're if they like let off like Murkrow plus like, I don't know, like Garchomp or like Golden Go, you, you you're like guaranteed to remove the Murkrow. They have nothing for that. Uh, and then like Dondozo comes in for free. But even then, they can just like bring like the the uh the Amoongus to like the matchup, expecting to like clear smog a dozo, and it's like, oh I didn't even bring the dozo. Actually, I just brought the Skeledurge and you just lose. I, I love the mind games with Dozo. It's like stupid. It's such a stupid Pokemon. I think too, so the reason why we see like even that Dozo Sand team that we have down there as well, right? Like the, the biggest strength I think of Dozo is when you pair it with partners that are so like strong in team preview as well that your opponent literally has to make a decision between those two modes, right? Oh, yeah. Because like when you see Lycanroc Tyranitar, everything that you lead to deal with the Don Dozo doesn't really want to lead into Lycanroc Tyranitar. Yeah, because you know? you're scared of like Sash Endeavor or like Endure Endeavor stuff. Like you have to like have like, oh, I need like my priority mon to like fake out and like i don't know like you need you need to like specifically prepare to not get endeavored and ko'd you know 
Exactly. And like also these uh, Dozo Sand teams, uh, it is worth noting that most Annihilates run Scarf on it, but I actually think they're going to start being better when they start running Bulk Up on it. Yeah. Like, no, I, with... I think Bulk Up Annihilate as an alternate mode for <laughs> Don Dozo teams is actually like very oppressive and something I wouldn't be surprised to see if someone bring into San Diego. Yeah. I don't think Final Gambit Annihilate's ever going to be good on like a team where you're already forcing a 2v1 for half the match. Um, Because I don't know, you want to have like Pokemon in the back to actually like have a contingency plan, but. No, um, I think is strong. I, I don't think it's going to be like, um, I don't think it's going to be like a, uh, everyone's prepared for Dondozo so it doesn't cut, or like even like Dondozo proves itself to be the best. I think it's going to be like two, maybe one innovative Dondozo team is going to go super far, but it's not going to actually win. Because like, I, Dozo I would... players are committed enough to like figure out like what, what the hell's going on and like how to not lose to the check every single time. I think one will at least place in a minimum top eight. A yeah, I, 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 that's that's what I'm saying. Like it, one of them is going to go far. I don't think it's going to be like a winner, though. Um, I'm sold on hyper offense winning, to be honest. Yeah, so like we actually had this conversation right before we got into the call and like, uh, you know, like we were talking a lot about it and you mentioned that like you really thought that hyper offense was going to win. It's kind of funny because I guess we have a little bit different opinions on that. I feel like tailwind offense is good but maybe like if someone finds a way to evade on it to not just make it as linear as it kind of performs right now yeah i think that that would actually make it like a winning regional like winning team you know yeah i mean um, i think that like the 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 adjustment that hyper offense needs to make is like if you look at hyper offense on preview it's always just like these i i get that garchomp and hydreigon and goldengo aren't actually frail but they don't like invest that much in bulk so like it's it's like it's it feels like five frail mons plus murkrow and you just like have to like play perfect but i think that like the 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 edit that has to be made is like two of these mons got to get dropped so you have like almost a balance option like you need that room for error yeah i think too you know what the biggest thing is as well with these teams and i think this is the one thing that can be tricky for them is that you're forced into using Merkur or talon flame right so there's a yeah. little bit limit there's a limit to how much you can kind of build out this team because the way i look at it there's always a structure with these teams right you have your tailwind mon you have a strong special attacker which is usually go let's be real your strong physical attacker which is usually garchomp right and then you have a trickermancer and thing for criminal. the mirror you have your war criminal yep. too <laughs> <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> You have something for the mirror, and then maybe you have like another special attacker, another physical attacker, yeah. right? And that's kind of the main like ways these teams are built. And I think when someone finds a way to deviate from that specific structure and build it out in a more cohesive or like, you know, kind of thoughtful way, it'll actually become a better archetype for it. Yeah, and it's a matter of time. Like like these these six Pokemon on screen, you know, swap in Annihilate occasionally aren't going to be the same like six Pokemon that you see on hyper offense in like a month from now. Cause we're going to have a few yeah. tournaments. People are going to figure it out. Um, I I'm, I'm convinced that like not this specific team or even like this exact hyper offense is going to, I think that maybe this first tournament, um, is going to be the tournament where we actually do see that edit on hyper offense. That's going to be a completely different thing. Uh, and, and the reason I think that take off like, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go the, ahead. the reason I think that is because like, uh, going into sword and shield, right. That first tournament, set the pace of things going into like scarlet and violet the online community has grown so much that honestly i think the those first few tournaments set the pace already and now like someone's gonna like shift gears and like do something different on this tournament you know because those, those those online tournaments are just as big as regionals yeah i mean i think that honestly so like even if we take away the miasca out of mouse hold like the main core that people are looking at right now is the Murkrow, Garchomp, Goldingo, Hydreigon. And like all the teams are some kind of variation on that, right? Like yeah. maybe there's one of these guys like picked out from the group, but almost always Murkrow's on there, almost always Goldingo's on there. You could fill out the last two basically however you want. I've seen Breloom Arcanine, I've seen Amoongus, I've seen, uh, you know, a ton of other Pokemon that you can fit on there. It has so much customization with the last two slots. And I think the people who find the right last two slots for the tournament are the ones who are going to yeah. succeed with the Yo, team. yo, low key, low key, I think Breloom might win. I think Berlum's like really good. It, it uh, got top four with like a build just like this. It had Arcanine as like the last on this team. And I think it got top four in like the first tournament uh, of the format. And then variations of it have kind of been nah. popping up. You know what? This is this is the team. You know what? I'm going to call This is the winning team. It's going to be Rotom Heat. Oh my God. 
god. I it's mean, Rotom really Heat's like one of those Pokemon that's always good meta too, so yeah. it's not even yeah. that far out of the realm of possibility. No, I'm feeling it. It goes positive into Chomp, it goes positive into Golden Go. You see a Hydreigon, don't care. I tell when it, I sport you, I mock punch you, it's all good. All right. Yeah, that effect spore is really going crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. that effect. <laughs> that, yeah, that effect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I mean, yeah, no. Okay, so final placement. What do you think? What do you think? You think Tailwind wins? Is that what you're saying? Is that all right. I, I'm going to rank it. This is how I think it's going to go. Like, is not like this is like the actual top four, obviously. This is how I think, like, this is how well I think they're going to do. Um. Oh, wait. I put those over the top of my bed. Hold on. Tailwind Hyper Offense at the top. Uh, Hard Trick Room on second like second best performance overall dozo third best performance and then screens is gonna like just do average the whole tournament mm, okay. yeah i i i would say i'd fairly agree with that i'd maybe swap dozo with hard trick room though that's that's the only change i would make i think i'd probably put dozo as like a second place team at minimum you got more faith on dozo than i do I know, and it's funny because you're the one who's like a big Dozo fan. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I don't even I, like it that much. I just, I don't know. I just think it's gonna run into like matchups where like the opponents don't respect it, and there is yeah. gonna be able to go through. I mean, it's and a you could say like, yeah, people should type. respect it, but like people have been ignoring it like forever. And now we were looking at some of these teams before talking about this video, and we were like, how does this team beat Don Dozo? You know, it that's the question you know? everyone has to ask though. Like, here's what you do: you build a team, and you go, wow, this team's heat. How do I beat Don Dozo? Like you, you have to ask that. It's like the check. Like when you're like when you're like signing up for a website, right? You're like filling out all your information. You're making your team, and at the bottom, when it says, "Have you read our rules and regulations?" It's like no. It, the the bottom says, "How do you how does your team beat Don Dozo?" That's the question you have to ask every time you finish a team. So like you gotta yeah. respect it, and people will respect it. But I feel like D Don Dozo's placement depends heavily on the Don Dozo users. Um, on the Don Dozo users bracket more so than any other archetype, you know? I also think on the on the set as well. I mean, you know, it's funny. I feel like the more I like see VGC progress through gens, the more it looks like a card game to me almost. Cause it's like um sometimes in like card games, people will just like accept auto losses. Like they'll be like, oh yeah, I auto lose this deck and that's okay. You yeah. know? Um, and that's kind of like how Don Dozo, like it, that's the impression Don Dozo gives me. Cause like not everyone plays it, but like some people just straight auto loot and they're just like, I'm just not going to play it, you know? Dude, <laughs> so it's I... really funny because it's like almost starting to get really similar to like even like the TCG and like other stuff yeah. in terms of like how people <laughs> approach it, you know? Yeah. I don't know enough about TCG, but like I'm going to say uh, some words that I've definitely heard before. I lose to Night March. I don't even know what that means. I just know that you guys know what it means. Oh all right. My God. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, is, is that... Is that all you think we're good you think we've covered like the yeah, i feel like i feel like we covered all the bases i mean obviously too in the comments make sure let us agree disagree with what we thought also again you know um hopefully you guys enjoyed the you know enjoyed the content you know yeah and and if you so, want coaching you know go to joe joe offers coaching services uh it's it's his main form of income so joe is actually a professional pokemon player me i'm a part-time pro part-time pro I'm, I, I do i do videos and i go to like one tournament a year but i'm actually going to like 10 tournaments this year which is good probably more than 10 it's good because i have locals it's good yeah so you get to make um, videos in, in person dude you know yeah no i can actually hang out with you for once um so yeah uh that's gonna be it for today's video guys you know leave a like subscribe do whatever we'll see you in the next one bye